In this lesson, we'll plot the circle in uh, polar coordinates versus Cartesian coordinates like we did in part one of this lesson. So now already you can see now that the circle is quite a bit more symmetrical, though I don't quite have enough points around the circle to make it completely smooth. Now if I was using, say, a, a spline, or a, then I could actually make it smoother with just a limited number of points. But for now, this helps emphasize the point that there's in here, we have one, two, three, four points in this first quadrant up here. And you can tell at, at these little angle marks right here that, that these, this is where the spacing of the circle is as you're going around. And in order to generate those points, the plot is in polar coordinates. And basically, we're looking at the trigonometric functions uh, cosine and sine. Here are the cosine values and the sine values based upon these angles right here. And you can look at them either in degrees here or if you're more comfortable you can look at, at them in radians that I have shown right here. So at zero degrees, here's zero degrees along the x-axis. Here's my x-axis like this and my y-axis like this. So that along the x-axis at zero degrees I take the cosine of zero degrees and that's what this function is down here. It gives me the x value. x is equal to r times the cosine of theta. And by default I'm using a value of r and that will give us a unit circle a circle with a radius of 1, and that's why it has a radius of 1. So this is the function I'm using to generate the x value. So, so r, so 1 times the cosine of theta, so the cosine of 0 degrees is equal to 1. So that gives me my x value for the first point, and for the y value, it's r is, x, y is equal to r times the sine of theta, so the sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0. And so my x, y coordinate is going to be 1 and 0. And that's that location right there, 1 and 0. All right. So now let's take the next point, which is 22 and a half degrees. So this cosine of 22 and a half degrees is 0 0.94. So you can see it's there, 0.924 over long in the x-axis. And the sine is 0 0.383, which means 0.383 up in the y-axis. And that's my point right there. And then this should be familiar to you, 45 degrees, a common number. At 45 degrees, there's 0 0.785 radians. It's 0 0.707, so it's 0 0.707 up and 0 0.707 over, and we generate that point. And by doing that, then my intervals along the circle are spaced evenly, and it generates a much nicer circle. And it doesn't even matter at this point how many points I use. It's, well, it, will, it will matter in the sense that uh, it'll make, like if you only use eight points, it's actually not going to look like a circle. It's going to look like an octagon. And if you use five points, it'll look like a pentagon around the circle. And that's one of the advantages of working in polar coordinates in this condition. But we never have to worry about the, you know, the interval being unevenly distributed. So in this case, my interval is 22 and a half degrees apart. And so it really simplifies the process when you plot it this way. And of course, since uh, trigonometric functions are considered circular functions, you might as well use circular type functions when plotting circular type objects. And then if you really want, you can, well, actually we already did it. We have actually converted the points from the trig functions back into Cartesian coordinates for you. So it's a much simpler way of working for plotting, and um, I highly recommend it. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.